All right, Fiberistas. Hey, happy Wednesday. I'm Stacy Budge Camison with UrbanGypsy.com. And welcome. Welcome to the live chat. So today I'm going to do something a little different for my YouTube channel. But if you're familiar with my blog post, this is a, a topic I cover quite often. And it relates to... Uh, it relates to uh, a question I got in uh, on Instagram so let me uh, let me just go over that so um, somebody on my Instagram account let me back up so in the month of October um, I'm I'm doing I'm giving myself an art journal challenge and art journaling is something that I have done regularly uh, since since I started since I started making art in college it's a practice that's one of the first things they taught us to do so I've been doing an art journal challenge because I fall off that wagon all the time I forget to to post things in there I get kinda lazy about posting things in there and and so uh, every now and again I'll give myself a challenge to just remind me that that's that's where some of my best ideas kinda take form anyway backing up so I've been posting those um, those daily entries so far it's just two <laughs> today would be three and um, somebody had had posted in there asking me saying that they had regretted that they didn't go to art college um, art school and that um, they really like having creativity as a major part of their life and any tips for starting an art career late in life having not gone to art school so I've got a, a lot of uh, of opinions about that so um, I'm gonna start off and what I'll do as well is in the show notes I'm gonna link some of the I'm gonna link some of um, the articles that I wrote uh, on becoming an artist uh, in the show notes anyway so first of all I just want to say and and this is something I I say over and over and over again that if if you want to be an artist you're already halfway there just go ahead and claim that title no matter how bad you think your art is no matter where you are in that journey because artist is is kind of a, a frame of mind artist is to me is somebody who chooses to express themselves through a visual language through making uh, something that that translates um, an, an ideas or emotions or feelings through color composition form texture all kinds of stuff um, as opposed to like you know writers would write poems or stories or dancers might express it through you know bodily you know actions and stuff like that artists do it through visual language all right so backing up art what let me tell you what art school taught me as it relates to making art now I was I went to uh, I got a BFA at a four-year college and that's a, a great path to go but that's not necessarily for everybody and I don't think it's necessary to really be an artist um, what art school did give me was a background in art history it gave me um, some extra tools for critical thinking as far as when it comes to your visual language um, it also taught me how to critique my own work as well as others works and that in turn taught me to to push myself to do better and create better work and, and to continually evolve um, aside from that art school also just you know gave me the the technical stuff you know this is how you do you know ceramics here's how you make 3d art here's how you do graphic design all that stuff um, so my concentration was in graphic design um, but having a BFA we had to take all these different mediums and then my concentration was in graphic design um, so we learned to do all kinds of different stuff but that's not to say I mean what you would learn you know at some other kind of art class 
would provide you with that same information. Um, I learned about weaving um, a lot from weaving in a weekend workshop at the Weavers Guild. Um, there's uh, some community classes at my art center here in Cary, North Carolina, and um, it's part of the Parks and Recreation, um, the Cary Art Center, and they have some excellent classes. Um, classes, the type of stuff that you know we might take as parts of, of a college course if if I was taking a college course it was similar type stuff so there's ways that you can learn that type of thing I don't necessarily feel that to be an artist you have to go to art school even though art school is going to give you some foundations for some critical thinking and some other stuff but I don't think that's necessary to make art to be perfectly honest um, if you if you want to go back to school then do it yeah great you know um, that, that would be a great way to network with other artists and to to really get into the thick of it um, but I don't think it's necessary to make art I also want to back up and say that what I'm gonna tell you today is not to teach you how to like go out and to get into galleries I'm still figuring that part out um, there there's a uh, lots of resources online that will help you learn that um, I've took a couple of business courses for artists. Um, there's one by, um, oh, what is her name? Um, somebody Ray. <laughs> I'll put a link down below. She has a great course. Um, I'm taking a, 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 from the Art Career Academy, and that's uh, Natasha Westcote, but I think she changed her name to something else. Um, she got remarried. So she has an excellent excellent class that talks about the nitty-gritty of you know approaching galleries and licensing and stuff like that and um, I also took a small workshop um, from Elena Hennessy who's an Asheville artist and she has some great information on on producing work um, for for a business for with in consideration for licensing and stuff like that anyway um, but I know most of you guys are uh, are our fiber artists like weavers and knitters and spinners and stuff like that so that's a, a little bit of a different field than painting but a lot of the same stuff does apply okay backing up so the way I see it being an artist is more like a trade than it is um, like a career that you would go and get your degree from and and the same was with graphic design I mean it's some skills that you learn and you you do learn the critical thinking as far as art goes but for the most part when I went out to get a job in graphic design um, and the same holds true that if you were approaching a gallery or submitting work to a juried show half the time they're not going to really care about what your education is they're not going to look for a degree it's not mandatory that you have a degree um, but what is important um, is your portfolio and your actual work. Um, they can see what they need to know by looking at your actual work. All right. Um, and your actual work is kind of def is kind of what separates um, the craft from the art. So that being said, let's say, um, like with my weaving. I'll give them that as an example or let's say even ceramic art um, you can go through the craft of learning how to make a perfectly uh, woven piece of fabric or a perfect ceramic mug but that only extends to a craft where your art comes in is from doing the same thing over and over and over again and to, to where the craft becomes second nature and you start adding your little bits of detail that becomes your style and that style becomes your branding so let's okay so for example with my ceramics this is a mug I made and I made a gazillion of these I, I made so many of these my studio mate got annoyed with me that I was making the same thing but but you know in perfecting that craft I was also going through the details of what kind of designs I like to put on here what the glaze is and and find coming out with a certain style as far as those mugs go um, 
the same holds true with my weaving. Uh, I know that in the fiber art collective, I could probably go through and there's several people in there um, without even looking at their names, I can pick out their work. And it's because they're diving very deeply into a style. And, and when you're in the, the thick of do, doing your work, you know, ideas will come up of ways that you can tweak stuff. Um, so, so you're kind of building this body of work. Um, and that's going to lead to your portfolio, but I'm going to kind of talk about that a little bit later about the portfolio. All right. So building your visual language as well as like sitting and doing the work, it also kind of helps to, to kind of gather some inspirations and put them in one place. And I do that with my art journals. Um, I've been keeping these and these aren't necessarily even you know, a lot of times it doesn't have anything to do with actual weaving, but it's just going through the process of, of figuring out, you know, what color combinations are really good. Or, you know, I, I tend to be a slightly messy style and that translates into my weaving. Um, different stuff like that. There's a lot of different things going on on my page, which translates into different textures. So keeping an art journal with inspirations is always great. I mean, I'll do things like paste, you know, here's some stamps, picture of my hubby, you know, this is a label from, from a, a 45 vinyl record. Um, there's a picture of my cats. I mean, just stuff. I mean, this is just a place where I just play and play with composition and play with color and just put ideas into place. It's also a place where I sketch out ideas. Like here's the sketches for those ceramic dolls with the weaving. And so these are some of the ideas as I was going through trying to figure out how I was going to, to proceed with that work. So art journals are a great way to, to like put all those ideas into one place. Um, again, I'm really bad to like fall off the wagon and, and not carry my journal with me. Um, so getting, doing these art journal challenges like I'm doing for the month of October is really good because to be perfectly honest, um, some of my best work has happened when I was really adamant about keeping this journal and I keep it with me. I keep it in my purse. You know, if, if an idea pops in my head, it's right there for me to, to put ideas in there. And, and to be honest, some of the, uh, there are two really successful graphic designers that I used to work with. And both of them kept journals and worked in them daily. I mean, daily. They would, you know, work on just pieces for themselves. They would hammer out ideas. But it was a way for them to, to really practice forming ideas and and when it's in your journal I mean nobody has to see it I mean I have some really ugly pages and if they're terrible then you cover them up and you try again or you leave it there because sometimes those bad ideas when you go back through your journals can spark some new ideas anyway so that's that's the big importance about journals and I'm going to also post in the show notes I have a couple of journal flips that I've videotaped um, and I'll put those in the show notes before below so you can see uh, some of my journals. I mean, they're not all beautiful works of art. Some pages are just really ugly, but it's, it's all part of the process. Anyway, um, also to build your visual language, you, you need to, it, it involves looking for everyday inspirations. And I'm going to, I mean, a lot of people, and I hate this because there's a canned answer that people always give that, uh, that they find inspiration from nature. I think that's a given. Everybody can find inspiration in nature, but I think by defaulting, by saying that you're not using your noggin to really, really, really develop um, some inspirations. I mean, inspirations are, can be found in more than just nature. I mean, inspirations can be found in, you know, my friend's curly hairdo or, 
the carpet at the accountant's office or you know the uh the, the there's a uh, this uh aggregate that's in the cement in the in the parking lot at the grocery store across the street that was this beautiful shade of green which is unusual for a parking lot parking lots are supposed to be gray and black i mean just uh, inspirations are everywhere and it just kind of takes noticing what catches your eye and maybe lingering on that a minute and kind of figuring out why that's drawing you and putting it in your journal to use for later. It, I mean, it may come up to where that inspiration pops up in a, a piece that you're working on next week, or it could be years from now, or never. You never know. But it, it, it helps to just gather as much inspiration as possible, and don't think that every single bit of it has to come from walking a trail in nature. Um, another part of building your visual language uh, comes from uh, really going for inst something more than just a, a visual aesthetic. Um, like I said, you know, when you're working on craft, how you're looking for to perfect the way something looks. When you're working on art, art if, is, like I said, a visual language. And a visual language is really effective when it elicits an emotion. Just like if you read a poem and it was very moving and deep, then then that's creating, that's, that's, you're relating to the visual language of that poet. Well, you can do the same thing with, with art, even abstract art, or even weaving. I mean, you know, if, uh, if I had a piece that was all off-white and maybe just shots of, of bright neon pink, that would elicit an emotion of of joy and and maybe a little playfulness you know if there was some kind of dingy grayish textures in there then that would elicit a more somber mood and that pink shooting through as as this joy shooting shooting out amidst this somber mood so there's ways to play with emotions even if you're just translating with yarn and texture so um and that can kind of come, you can work some of those ideas out, like I said, in your art journal. But that's one thing, if um, to move away from, from uh, a craft into art, uh, you, you're kind of working into your visual language as to what you're trying to convey. And you might not be able to verbalize what you're trying to convey, but you might actually feel it. And I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, all right. Um... So, that being said, uh, not every artist has to make a career out of it, to be honest. I mean, it, it's nice to be able to make a career out of it, but sometimes you can just make art to make art. Um, but, but regardless of that, I think there's still some steps that you're going to want to take when you're really you know, stepping into that, that artist persona that you've already claimed, okay? And one of the things, like I've mentioned before, is building a portfolio. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what makes a good portfolio. But building a portfolio is, is a, is a cohesive, it brings kind of all your work together in one cohesive way. Um, and by doing that, like I said, when you're doing repeats of the same stuff, you, you're building a body of work. It's not that the pieces that came before weren't viable, but it's an idea that was taking further, further, further. And then you have a document and a, a record of the evolution of an idea, and that's your body of work. One of the ways that you can do that is actually applying some, uh, some like business management to to actually doing your work and even if you're doing art as a hobby it kind of helps you know in your art journal and you know or spreadsheet or whatever works uh, you know I have a spreadsheet I use Asana and spreadsheets literally to plan out my my projects that I'm working to make sure that there's a cohesive amount of work in each body to be able to bring it into a portfolio as as a unit so like um like those 
yeah, like this project that I just showed you here, this one right here, for it to me, for it to be a cohesive project, I need to have no less than six to eight of these figures because I want it to be like an installation. If I was doing a series of wraps of woven arts, um, art weaving kind of wraps, to me, a cohesive body of of that work would be anywhere between eight and 12. You know, and then that way, as you're building your portfolio, you have a section of, of, this, of this work that all kind of looks alike. And if you think about it, if you were to go into a gallery or if you go even to the museum and you're looking at, at somebody's work that's being displayed, they're doing a lot of similar things. You know, the pieces may all be different and have, you know, different variations, but honestly, there's a lot of similarities and that's how they build a style, that's how they build a brand, that's how they, how they build a body of work, and that's how they build their portfolios. Um, take for instance, Monet, and I use this example a lot in my blog post. Um, Monet did those haystack paintings, right? And he didn't just paint it once, he painted 23 different versions of these. And those are the ones that made the cut to the body of work. How many did he do in the meantime? I mean, he might have had others. He might have had many sketches that were more than those 23. But those 23 are what make up that body of work that are called Monet's haystack paintings. So think in terms when you're working on your art, if you really are digging something that you're doing, don't feel that you're done after you do that one piece. Revisit it, try a different variation of that. Try to recreate it because a lot of times, especially with art weaving, it's almost impossible to totally recreate a piece. So just, if you really enjoyed weaving it, then just weave it again and see what happens because chances are with art weaving especially, it's gonna come out different. So anyway, all right. And finally, I'm going to go through what makes a good portfolio. Like I said, a cohesiveness of style. Because let's say that you were putting a portfolio up in hopes of maybe getting some gallery work or maybe getting into a juried show. They're going to want to see a style and a consistency. So being able to have like a, you know, decide what would constitute this body of work. You know, and maybe maybe you don't have to have more than one or two, maybe three even bodies of work on your portfolio, but what would feel like it fully rounds out conveying what you feel your visual language is as represented by your brand and your style. I hope that makes sense. All right, and, and like I said, it's good to organize the pieces into bodies of work. Um, if I go to like a even just a craft show, uh, ceramic artists a lot of times they'll have very similar work and they group it together by this is one set of glaze you know pieces in one one type of glaze, and this is another set of pieces in a different type of glaze. Well, think of your work as the same thing, you know. Is it a set of handmade pou woven pouches that you're doing that are you know, have a similarity to them because they're pouches or maybe you're using the same color, excuse me, or they're, you know, coming off of a series of sketches that you did in your art journal that all kind of are an evolution of an idea. So try to get some stuff together into bodies of work. And, and like I said, that shares an evolution of thought. And another thing um, that makes a good portfolio is presentation. Um, that means when you photograph it, make sure that you're photographing it very cleanly. Don't add a lot of props. You want the focus, you don't want to take the focus away from your work. So like if you have some hand spun yarn, it makes no sense to put hand spun yarn in like a wine glass. Do you ever have yarn in a wine glass? Chances are no. And the wine glass is kind of going to take away from the actual work. What people want to see is the detail of your work. So make sure your presentations are good, make sure your photos are very clear, um, make sure that your portfolio page in, on your website is, has as few distractions as possible. You want people to focus on the work. You may find the most beautiful model to model your shawl, but if she's going to detract from your work, then it's going to lose the purpose. I mean, a lot of times when we were photographing stuff 
for the craft book, we would cut the models off, you know, that, that their eyes, you know, we wouldn't even have them look at the camera because we didn't want the attention to draw away from the actual product. So think product first and um, cleanliness and, and being able, you can see the, the, the information, make sure that, you know, arms aren't covering up your piece, make sure that your piece is well lit, um, presentation is everything. All right, and and even if even if you're getting your portfolio together, like I said, um, even if you don't do anything with it, even if you're just making art for yourself, I think as an artist, give yourself the gift of pulling your work together in a cohesive piece, in in a cohesive body, in a, a portfolio. I think giving yourself the gift of, of having that work presented professionally, even if it's just for yourself, I think it's going to make you proud to share it with your friends and family. I think it's going to make you proud to go back and look. And I think it's going to make you proud to keep going and to keep evolving and keep making work. Anyway, so that's my 25-minute diatribe on being an artist. <laughs> Are there any questions? And I know I just like really rambled. And I wanted to say hi to everybody. Thank you for joining me. Any questions on becoming an artist? And like I said, for the nitty gritty of, of art, I'll, I'll put links below for those, those artists who give more down and dirty information on, on, um, on the, the business basics of finding galleries and, and, um, applying for shows and building artist statements and stuff like that. Um, I really can't give a lot of information to that because I'm still kind of working my way through that stuff. So anyway, any questions? Hi, Connie and Lynn and thanks for that was great information. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. Epiphany London and M Melinda Smith and Deb's Debs Bees and Carly Hall. Yay! I'm glad you liked it. Like I said, it's a topic close to my heart. I mean, I think if you guys are already, you know, dabbling in art weaving and really finding expression through through yarn and color and texture, then you guys are already artists. So I hope you take it to as as far as as where you want it to go and 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 find great expression. Because you have that gift for a reason. Because the universe wants you to use that visual language to, to share your message, whatever that is. Anyway. All right. If there's no more questions, then I am going to sign off. I'll put all those links down below. And, um, and I, I also wanted to point out, I know that we had talked about trying to do um, sh to share fringes on how to do fringes and embellishments for weaving and and here's the problem I'm coming across that's part of my paid offering um, with the back to basics and I am revamping it so I can actually add a little bit to that back to basics but I'm trying to figure out how to give some free information without giving up the information for free that people have already paid for so there's that Anyway, so I haven't forgotten you guys. It's just I'm trying to figure out how to do it. And it might be that I just break out that lesson um, as part of the first three and and um, and then just give a little a little preview as to what that would be be about. Anyway. So there you have it. Yay! All right, thanks for joining me and I will see you guys next week. If there was a question that you had that I didn't get to answer here, then please either leave me a comment on this YouTube video or you can share it in the Fiber Art Collective or just shoot me an email. Anyway, I love to hear from you guys and share with me what you're working on. I love to to see what you guys are working on. You guys inspire me so much. Anyway, all right, go make art. Talk to you soon. Bye now. <laughs>